Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various aspects of geography. So, in today's session on biogeography, we are going to learn a very interesting fusion concept. Why I say fusion concept? Because this concept is a fusion between the zoology, right, the sciences and the geography. So, it is called zoogeographic regions of the world. So it's kind of a combination of geography and zoology and it's very interesting. So before we learn it, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now let's learn about the zoogeographic regions of the world. Now it's very interesting that zoology and geography have been combined in this concept. So in this concept, if you want to learn the regionalization of the distribution of animals, that is fauna kingdom, it's very much important to have the knowledge of the two. One is the regions of the world, right? So you have to have a command on the world map part first. And the second part is you have to have the knowledge about the fauna kingdom, about a little zoology as well, right? So it's a combination of zoology and geography in biogeography in this particular topic, right? So now let's understand what is this faunal geographic region or zoogeographic region and on what criteria, in what ways it has been classified and also what is its distribution across the world, right? So A.R. Wallace, this gentleman here, he was a zoologist who attempted the first classification of world animals, that is fauna, into different regions, right? So that is part of regional geography as well and biogeography as well, if you see, in 1876. That is important to remember. Now, if you look into this particular world map, this is what exactly we mean by zoogeographic regions. It means that in which region, which type of fauna, that is animal, exist, right? So that is on that basis, it has been classified into different regions of the world. Now, if you observe this map, you have in American side, north side, you have near Arctic. Now, if you see near Arctic, it is basically the word near Arctic. So this is basically an Arctic belt, if you observe, where nearby this you have different kinds of faunal regime where different animals are there. Then you have in Central or Mesoamerica, what we say, you have Panamanian type, right? That is Panamanian region, Panama region, right? Then in Southern part of America, South America, you have Neotropical, right? Then come to the European and Asian side. So in Northern part, you have the Pale Arctic, right? So it is again nearby Arctic. So the name is Pale Arctic. Then come to the southern part of Mediterranean, that is northern Africa. It is Saharo Arabian, this portion with Asia Minor, right? And then you have Afrotropical. Then you have something called Sino Japanese, this portion. Then you have something called the Orient, that is, remember, referring to the East from the West, it is always called Orient, Oriental cultures. So this is again called Oriental. Right. And then we have something called very specific, very unique, which is Madagascar, related to Madagascar. And then we have Australian region. Right. So this is what we learn as the zoogeographic regions of the world. Now let's elaborate the features and the important characteristics of each of these regions separately. So this was the original map in 1876, which he drew, citing various regions. And the earlier map that we saw is basically the modern connotation of the same, right? So a few more regions have been divided. So this is the original where, remember E.R. Wallace divided the world into six regions, right? So we have Palearctic, you have Nearctic, Oriental, Ethiopian, that is basically this particular entire Africa, and then you have Australian, so that is generally the entire Australia New Zealand section, and then you have something called Neotropical, which is part of the Southern America. So this was the map and also some transition zones were also drawn. Also geological time scale was used to actually create land bridge that is about migration of species. This was also being talked in this particular concept. So this is what a map of zoogeographical regions originally looked like. And remember the modern map as we saw earlier in this lecture as well. Right. So now let's understand one by one each of these regions. So first region is 
Paley Arctic region. Now the region includes Europe and Middle and North Asia. Look at this entire belt here, right? This is Paley Arctic. And the most important animals of this great faunal region are Russian Desmans, Dormis of Eurasia, Mediterranean Mole Rats, Saiga, Chiru Antelope, it's type of a deer, right? Then we have Ascentors, Crocodiles, Lizards, and remember Reptiles are found here in less numbers. That is important. Now, this is not the end. Palearctic region has been further classified into five sub-regions. Remember, it's a huge region. So it has five sub-regions. That is important to remember. One is called Tundra region. It represents caribou, lemming, muskox, muskox, arctic hare, arctic fox, wolf, polar bear. All these animals are part of Tundra region. Then we have temperate coniferous forest region where you have moose, mule, deer, lynx, all these animals. Then in temperate grassland region, what we have is saiga, wild ass, horses, jerboa, hamster, jackals. Right? And remember, if you don't know any of these examples, just Google it and find the image of these animals. It would be interesting. Right? So then you can actually relate to these examples. Otherwise, you can remember one or two names that would be good for your answer writing for exam purpose. Right? Then in deciduous forest region, remember raccoons, right? Opossum, red fox, black bear, these are the most important animals. And finally, the desert region in Palearctic has some important animals like lizard, snake, hamster, hedgehog, rat, jabo, and cottontail. That is the important aspect of this particular region. So now the question is that how to remember this region, right? So first of all, on world map, you must practice the region and divide it into sub parts and at least remember one or two examples from each. That is the way to learn it, right? That's important. Now, go to the second one that is knee arctic. Now it is part of the North America and Greenland section, right? As we know from the map as well, this is entire knee arctic region, right? And remember, both these regions were connected through Bering land bridge in the tertiary epoch. If you have studied geological time scale, it's already there in the playlist on physical geography on my channel. So if you have not, you can go to there and learn about what is tertiary, what is Pleistocene, right? And then you can understand in details. So this land bridge enabled the free exchange and migration of these, you know, regional bodies of animals. That is important, regional species of animals. So, for example, you observe American and European bisons, these are important, who reproduce and remember, they have gone to different regions, they are found across the region. Then you have salamons and trouts, right, the cold region animals and fishes, these are important. Then, remember, on the basis of such biological similarities between Palearctic and Nearctic, some scientists have grouped these two regions in a single region, which is called Holarctic. So remember, this entire Arctic close region is also together known as whole Arctic region, right? So remember, this was not part of the A.R. Wallace classification, but it has been named whole Arctic later on. That is an important point to remember. Now comes the third one, that is Oriental region. Now remember, as I said, Orient means East. So South and Southeast Asia includes this. It has Himalayan, Tibetan Plateau, Chinese mountain region, transitional zones between them, right? And the whole of this faunal region falls under tropical, subtropical area, right? And also, it is associated with the Ethiopian faunal region, right? It is here, so it is associated. And the faunal region is characterized by the dominance of Indian elephants, rhinos, deer, antelope, lizard, snake, gibbons, monkey, so many animals that we already know about, right? So that is important, this oriental region. Now comes the fourth one, that is the Ethiopian region. Now remember, the earlier name for Africa was Ethiopia and also this ocean adjoining it was called Ethiopian Ocean. As we have learnt in the oceanography, right? If you have not watched oceanography video, I recommend definitely go to the oceanography playlist and watch the videos for details. So, Ethiopian region incorporates the substantial area of maximum, you know, the south of Sahara belt in Africa, right? The faunal region also completely is under tropical climate, right? And you have this minimum diversity of animals there, but that minimum is also, you know, region represents about 174 families, that is 22 of them are very unique vertebrate, right? So it has 140 genre of mammals, 294 genre of birds, so that is the diversity that we see, right? So even if it is saying minimum diversity, but it has lots of, you know, variety of animals in this particular region. Then comes the Australian region 
as the name suggests it's nearby australia the region here so australian region includes australia new zealand and some islands there right now this particular kingdom of animal or this particular region of animal is dominated by some animal called placental animal the placenta based animals the marsupials who are characterized by pouches in their stomach in which they keep their babies right for example we already know kangaroos right so this faunal region is further divided into three sub regions as well so one is the desert region part one is savanna grassland part one is tropical forest part so each region has some different characteristic of the animals right so in desert what is found marsupial mole jerboa parakeet lizard in savanna we find red kangaroo emu bandicoot right cockatoo parrot then in tropical forest what is found is the musk kangaroos wallaby koala right the very famous which feeds on eucalyptus opossum right so these are some of the animal examples in this region which is found that is most important here in australian region then the sixth one according to er wallace classification if you observe is the neotropical region as it is said neo means new tropical region right which is part of the southern part of america right so if you observe here this continent or this particular landmass has very exclusive type of mammals which are found nowhere else in the world that is its uniqueness almost about 32 families of marsupials which are different than australian marsupials are found here that's very much important and also this faunal region is a huge region so it has been divided again into three sub regions one is called temperate grassland one is desert and one is tropical forest right so grassland region has particular animals called guanaco then you have ree then you have kevi fox shunt and desert region has vultures guanaco ree armadillo right then in tropical forest region we have monkey pygmy ant eater sloth tree snakes parrots hummingbirds these are very much unique species which are part of new tropical region in south america so that is important to remember here So now when we have discussed in details the world classification or world regionalization to say in terms of the zoogeographic regions in today's session in the sessions to come we'll be learning on phytogeographic regions so don't go anywhere be safe keep learning keep sharing the videos all my best wishes to all of you